When I built my very first Squarespace website, I was so excited to share it with the world. And then I looked at it on my phone and I was not happy with what I saw. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite tips and tricks for making the mobile version of your Squarespace website look awesome. I'm Becca from Inside the Square, and underneath this video, you'll find a list of chapters in case you want to skip ahead to any important parts of this video, but I'll be sharing with you my favorite tips for making sure that Squarespace looks good on smaller screens. Let's get started. One of the first things you should know is how Squarespace is designed to create the version of your website that looks a little different on smaller screens. Squarespace is what's known as a responsive website builder. And what this means is the website builder will respond to the size of the screen being used to look at that website, and it'll make adjustments to the layout and the way content is displayed so it looks better. Here's one of my favorite examples. Squarespace decided that if you're using a screen that is about 950 pixels or smaller, that's not going to be big enough to show your main menu. That's when your mobile menu kicks in. Another example, when you have two columns of content on your Squarespace blog, as soon as you hit this breakpoint, Squarespace decides to stack those two columns because scrunching them down to be side by side would just be too difficult to use. So Squarespace is a responsive website builder. And while it does make automatic adjustments to the layout and the way your content is displayed, there are things that we can do to make sure our website looks good on smaller screens. Now, I will get into some custom code stuff in here because that is one of my favorite tricks for making sure my site looks awesome. But I do want to mention before we jump into that, Squarespace has some features that can help us. I'm going to share my screen with you to show you some of my favorites. Here we are inside Squarespace, and let's hop into edit mode so we can check out these options we have for changing the way our website looks on different screen sizes. One of my favorites that we'll cover first is hiding content blocks. Here in this page section, I've got an image, a shape block, a title, a paragraph, and then two different buttons, contact us and click to call. Click to call doesn't really belong anywhere on the desktop version of a website. This is a mobile only button. So let's go ahead and hide it together. I'm going to click this icon to open up my layers panel. Here you'll see I've got two different buttons. Now I want you to notice they both say button, but when I hover over them, we're going to see which button is highlighted here in the editor. Do you see that label on the left button? And now the label on the right button. This is the button we want to hide on desktop, so I'll click this icon and we won't see it anymore. Let's go ahead and take a look at the mobile version of our website. Here we go. And if we scroll down here, I can hide this contact button specifically on mobile by clicking into that same layer panel, selecting the correct button in the list, and clicking that icon to hide it. Now, I also don't think that we really need the shape block anymore, so I'll go ahead and hide that one as well. Let's move this click to call button to the side. We'll make it the same width as the page, and let's go ahead and pull this image up, creating a little bit of layering. And now we have a completely different layout for the mobile version of our website, but our desktop version was not affected at all. Pretty awesome, right? So one last time, click that Layers option to open the Layers panel, and here you can see which content blocks are being selected, and you can hide them specifically on mobile, or hop over to the desktop version, click the Layers panel, and hide it here. The next editing trick that's one of my favorites is in this page section down here. I'm going to select the edit section option to show you I've toggled off fill screen. When I toggle this on, there we go. I want you to notice the grid on the screen here. Do you see how this image on the top left can't actually go all the way to the top of the page section? Same thing with this image on the bottom. If we look at that grid, we can't actually pull it all the way down to the edge. When I'm here in edit mode, I can select edit section and toggle off fill screen. That allows me to pull the content all the way to the edge of the section. I've also done that with these images on the left and on the right. Notice how they go all the way up against the border of the page. Let's select save and exit. And I want you to watch where these images go when I increase the screen size. Do you see how they all stay on the edge of the screen? When you connect a content block to the top, right, bottom, or left of the page section, it's going to stay there. And this text in the middle, that's going to stay right in the middle. 
That content alignment will change once you hit the mobile view, so make sure you hop into edit mode and adjust the content blocks here in the mobile version of your website so that the text is still legible and we don't have too many content blocks running into each other. We can also change the size of these objects here if we want them to be larger or smaller, but again, keeping them aligned to the edge will help them stay at the edge no matter what screen size we're working with. And if we keep this content block right here in the middle, it's going to stay right there in the middle. Last but not least, I want to talk about vertical alignment. Do you see how this accordion block takes up all of this space, but the content is all the way down here at the bottom and we can barely even read it? Yes, we can reduce the size of the accordion block like this, but we still have a big space right at the very top. Let's change the vertical alignment. Here I can say align at center or all the way to the top of that content block. So this way, we can actually see the content on top of that background image. If we take a look at the desktop version, this accordion is still set to have the vertical alignment at the bottom. All we adjusted was the vertical alignment here in the mobile version of our Squarespace website. Now, when it comes to making changes using custom code, I want to issue a really important warning here, okay? When we're using custom code to change the way content is displayed, we're overriding what Squarespace is designed to do. So I only recommend doing this if you're really unhappy with the way the layout looks on smaller screens. If you can make it work by adjusting content in a fluid engine section, then definitely take that route instead. But if you have to make some adjustments to a section like a collection item or a list section, that's something we need to do with custom code. And that's exactly what I'm going to be sharing with you here next in this tutorial. Now, let me share my screen again so we can get into some custom code creations. Here we are back inside Squarespace. And on this page, I've got a page section with the list of people that I can scroll through. Then if we look at the section underneath that, I have a section with all of the people displayed on the page. Let's say I want this option to scroll through horizontally only on the desktop version of my website. On the mobile version, what I'd rather see is this second page section so I can vertically scroll through all of the content. We're going to use custom CSS to tell the computer browser which section to display on which device. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to desktop view and I'll hop into edit mode because the first thing we need to do is name our sections. Selecting edit section, I can add an anchor link or a name to this particular section. Let's go ahead and just call it desktop because this is the one we want on the desktop. Now if we scroll down here, we'll find the same option for this section. There we go. We'll name this one mobile because this is the section that we want to have on mobile devices. Now let's add some custom code to make this magic happen. I'll select save and exit. And on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to navigate to pages, then custom code, then custom CSS. If your menu doesn't look like mine, that's okay. Just press the forward slash key on your keyboard and search for CSS so you can navigate there directly. Now, the first thing I have to do is tell the computer browser what screen size I want to edit here. So I'm going to say at media screen and I'll open up a parentheses and I'll say max width 640 PX. Then I'll open up a curly bracket. Let me zoom in on this code so you can see it. What I'm telling the computer is that anything between these curly brackets should only be showing up when the screen is 640 pixels in width or smaller. And here I'm going to say desktop display none. Now let's select save and let's take a look at the mobile version of our site. And here you can see we no longer have the desktop section visible. We're just seeing the mobile version, but we're still seeing both on desktop view. So let's hide this mobile version on larger screens. We're going to have another code that is very similar. This one's going to say at media screen and we'll say min width. And here let's go for 641 PX and open up a curly bracket. Now we can say mobile display none. And instantly Squarespace is going to remove the mobile section from screens that are larger than 641 pixels in width. We'll go ahead and save this code. Take a look at mobile. It's perfect. Take a look at desktop. We're seeing the desktop section. We are good to go. One last time, these labels themselves, we created those. We hopped into edit mode, 
selected edit section and named this section desktop and we named the one underneath it mobile. And I want you to notice I can't edit the mobile section on desktop anymore. It's completely hidden. I have to go to mobile view if I want to make changes here. Just remember that's where we named it. And if a section disappears from one size or another, make sure you click on the correct view here in the editor to make changes to that content. The last piece of advice that I want to give you about making sure your Squarespace website looks good on smaller screens is that Squarespace is changing all the time. They are constantly making updates to the platform and the program and the way that it works so that our websites look amazing on different devices. The team at Squarespace is hard at work with updates and they release them frequently. So if there has been a new update to editing the mobile version of Squarespace, I'll be sure to share it below. But also keep an eye on what Squarespace is doing. Here are a couple links you can check out to learn about the latest in Squarespace. Inside the Squarespace forum at forum.squarespace.com, they have a section called What's New at Squarespace. Here you can find monthly updates about Squarespace where they talk about the program and the platform and all kinds of cool stuff and changes that are happening there. I also recommend checking out pros.squarespace.com. This is the Squarespace Circle blog. Here they have all kinds of interesting topics and they post articles about that. And you can also find information under develop your skills. This is one of my favorite sections, not just because I'm featured right here in an article from August 28th, but you can find all kinds of cool stuff that can help you become more confident in your Squarespace design skills. Things like color theory, how to improve UX, all kinds of information about interesting things that you can do with the Squarespace program itself. And last but not least, visit my own website starting with insidethesquare.co forward slash refresh. Squarespace Refresh is their annual announcement of major program updates. And on this page of my website, I break down these program updates to let you know the latest and greatest changes that are happening to Squarespace. I'll include important links and tutorials and key takeaways for any size of business that happens to be using the platform. Again, you'll find this at insidethesquare.co forward slash refresh. I'm Becca from Inside the Square, and I hope you enjoyed this video. We covered a lot today, so feel free to go back using the chapter links below in case there's a specific spot of the video you want to watch. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to help. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you enjoyed this video. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. To learn more about creative ways that you can make Squarespace uniquely yours, visit InsideTheSquare.co. That's InsideTheSquare.co.